A lot of my books, I've tried to remove the kind of taboo or the negative associations we have with the word like power or with the word ambition. You know, I try and say ambition is a good thing. It means that you have, you, you believe in yourself, you, you, you have some self-love and you believe you're worth something and you want to go out and achieve and, and, and create something worthwhile for other people. So ambition is a, is a positive thing. But so many people are just kind of embarrassed about being a human being, embarrassed about our primate nature, embarrassed about our own aggressive impulses. This is partly why boys are failing in our schools now at a disproportionate yeah. rate, you know. the the And I see... This, there's an assault of the sort that you're describing on the better part of striving masculinity. And, you know, I had a friend who killed himself because he identified his ambition with, you know, the, the, the patriarchal force that's devouring the environment, let's say, and that's, a con that's you know, the cause of, of historical horror. And you might say, well, no one takes that on to themselves to that degree. And that's, well, you can say that, but that you just don't know what the hell you're talking about. People take that on to themselves all the time. And then they, they start to identify the best part of them that strives forward with the destructive impulses of humanity. And they're right. so ashamed because they can't yeah. do anything good then, but in principle... Yeah, You know, he tried to be as inoffensive and harmless in every possible way as he possibly could. And it just sucked all the life out well, of him. Well, you end up turning that aggressive energy on yourself is what ends up happening. And that's maybe leads to suicide, the ultimate kind of self-aggression. I know that I personally have, as I said, I definitely have a shadow side. I'm very aggressive and extremely competitive and I have a lot of anger. So a lot of that, mm -mm. those experiences in my youth made me very angry. But the way I kind of integrated my shot, I'm not saying this is a model, but the way I integrated it was through my books. Yeah, so yeah. I kind of, that anger kind of seeps through the material that I write. And I find I can only write when I have that kind of anger, but I don't rant. Mm. I don't yell and kind of put people down. I kind of channel it into something productive and something creative. And so to yeah, me, I definitely that's, do that when I'm lecturing. Uh -huh. You know, and people have commented, you know, some of the people who've criticized me that I'm an angry person, and which isn't true, uh, but it's definitely that anger, that capacity for anger definitely is something that gives you force and it, and it can push and anger definitely. So psychophysiologically, so imagine that this is obviously a thought experiment, but imagine you're chasing a cat with a broom. Well, the cat's going to run from the broom, but if you corner the cat with the broom, it will attack you, even though right. it's just a cat. Well, and the reason for that is that fear will facilitate either freezing or escape. Right. But sometimes fear isn't the right response, and anger will suppress fear. And so one of the tools that we have at our disposal psychologically is anger as a an antidote to the terror that would otherwise freeze you. And you can right. integrate that. You know, that's you know, if you if you have some justifiable moral outrage, let's say something really annoys you or 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 i shouldn't say that deeply violates your sense of moral propriety i don't mean trivial things then the fact of that forceful response can motivate you to do things well it does for, me for lecture but certainly to write it, it takes a lot of energy to write man you need all yeah. those sources of energy if you're going to yeah. be able to do it just right. even to turn it on yourself to discipline yourself you know it's like I had to grab myself by the scruff of the neck when I was a young guy to sit down, sit down, God damn it, and write. You know, yeah. and, and, and there's a force that's necessary, to, especially if you're open, because you're all over the place, if you're creative, to, yeah. to get yourself to sit down and focus. Yes, that's right. Yeah. And, um, you know, some of that anger, you know, I think Jung talks about this, is that that dark side contains a lot of energy. It contains a lot of power. Those two-year-olds that are kicking and screaming, that's all this kind of force behind it. And when you sort of are ashamed of it and you push that down, you're kind of getting rid of an incredible well of energy that you can use for your creativity, for your work, etc. You can take that energy, like you say, and create discipline out of it, do something creative out of it, support some cause that you really believe in you know so that shadow side when you when you deny it only negative things will happen and and it is extremely important for people to first recognize it in themselves you know and it's it's very hard for a lot of people to do that